To begin with, let me just start off by saying this, quoting what Father Lampert once said in an interview, our guardian angels are more powerful than the devil. People should always realize that our guardian angels are more powerful than the devil himself. Now, we believe that before the fall, the devil was the greatest of all the angelic creatures closest to the throne of God, Lucifer, meaning light bearer. But after his rebellion, he's cast down with one third of the angels. Mm -hmm. But an angel that fell from a higher <laughs> ranking is inferior to an angel from a lower ranking who truly was obedient to God. So we think of the nine choirs of angels, you know, the, the seraphim, the cherubim, the thrones, the virtues, the dominations, the powers, the principalities, the archangels, the angels. So our guardian angels come from the ninth choir. But again, our guardian angel from the ninth choir, because it's a good angel, is more powerful than the devil himself. How can our guardian angels be more powerful than the devil? As we know, angels are purely intellectual creatures that received infused knowledge from the moment that they were first created. St. Augustine distinguishes between what he calls morning and evening knowledge. Evening knowledge is that by which the angels know things in their proper nature and this knowledge is considered imperfect. The evening knowledge is the knowledge of things in the natural order, the ability to speak other languages, and so on. Morning knowledge, on the other hand, is that by which the angels know things according to their glory, and this knowledge is considered to be perfect. The first knowledge of things, the evening knowledge, was present to the angels at the onset of their creation. But the angels only received morning knowledge when they chose to glorify God. They took their intellect and they chose to then honor and glorify God. And in doing so, they completed their creation. Just saying for a moment in the Genesis account of creation, it was always evening came and morning followed, and then it was the new day. So the angels that chose to rebel against God, Lucifer and his angels are imperfect creatures. That's why I told you yesterday that your guardian angel is more powerful than the devil himself. The devil is an imperfect creature because he has evening knowledge, but never received morning knowledge. So even though he comes from the highest choir, the seraphim angels, an angel in the lowest choir that chose to glorify God now outranks an angel in an upper choir that chose to rebel against God. So when Lucifer sinned, we know that his sin impacted other angels as well. So the rite of exorcism states clearly in the whole history of salvation, there are angelic creatures. A part of them serve the divine plan, always giving hidden and potent aid to the church. Another part is called fallen and is called diabolic. They oppose the salvific will of God and the redemptive work of Christ. And they also try to associate humans in their own rebellion against God. St. Thomas Aquinas maintains that the first of the sinful angels was before the fall the most exalted of all the angels. What do we call this particular angel before the fall? His name was Lucifer. Lucifer. So after the fall, Lucifer became the chief of all the evil spirits, now referred to as the devil or Satan. The word devil comes from the Greek word diabolos, which means adversary, slanderer, or opposer. It occurs 33 times in the New Testament. The word Satan comes from the Hebrew and means accuser. It occurs 34 times in the New Testament. Another term used for Satan, as we mentioned, is Lucifer. Satan is a morally wicked creature, hostile to both humans and to God. He is not wicked by nature, but because of vice. As Wisdom 2.24 declares, through the devil's envy, death entered the world. He's also known as the enemy, the adversary, the one who sows weeds in the field, Matthew 13, 39. He's called the enemy. He is the antichrist par excellence, 1 John 4, 3. Depending on the form his malice takes, he is described as a liar and the father of lies and a murderer from the beginning since his lying led humanity into sin and death, John 8, 44. 
Inasmuch as he draws humans into evil, he is the tempter and the seducer. Lucifer, like all the angels, was created for the purpose of glorifying God. However, instead of serving God and praising Him forever, he desired to rule over heaven and over all creation in the place of God. He wanted supreme authority, and in chapter 14 of the book of the prophet Isaiah, Lucifer states, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit upon the mount of the congregation. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High, and the key word that we hear in these statements is I, which is why we say that the sin of the devil is the sin of pride. St. Augustine writes that pride is the disordered love of my own excellence to the point of contempt for God. Again, we begin to love ourselves more than we love God. St. Thomas Aquinas explains that it is impossible for a creature to cease being a creature so as to become equal to the Creator in all respects. Satan, therefore, wanted to be like God, not by nature as an equal, but by resemblance. He wanted to be similar to God. Inasmuch as God by nature is an end unto himself, therefore Lucifer used his free will, choosing to remain the first and an inferior order, rather than to become one among others in a superior order. You might say the lion would be better to reign in hell rather than to serve in heaven. So Satan's sin involves the sin of many angels. The book of Revelation declares that the dragon's tail swept one-third of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. And when Lucifer rebelled against God, being closest to the throne of God, his sin illumined. It went through all the choirs of the angels, and one-third of the angels embraced his concept of rebelling against God. So angels in the higher choir illumined those in the lower choirs. We can say then that Lucifer's sin, you could say, trickled down and one-third of the angelic choir chose also to rebel against God. I hope that this video will be helpful to you in understanding more about our faith and especially helpful in your own spiritual warfare. As we've said many times before in other videos, spiritual warfare is very real. There is a furious, fierce, and ferocious battle raging in the realm of the spirit between the forces of God and the forces of evil. Warfare happens every day all the time. Whether you believe it or not, you are in a battlefield and you are in a spiritual warfare.